Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I want to talk to you about the Dagoma Niva. Stick around. Welcome back makers. So next to me I have the Dagoma Niva right here. This is a Delta 3D printer by a French company called Dagoma. As you probably recall, I unboxed this live during a live stream here on the channel and I printed a test print, which was this Banshee right there. But we'll get to that in a bit. The Niva is a Delta style 3D printer. It has a build volume of 180 millimeters in diameter on the base and 200 millimeters in height. It pretty much comes pre-assembled. All you'd have to do is simply attach the effector arms and you're all set to go. As you can see, the Neva is a relatively clean looking 3D printer. It only comes with a USB inlet to attach it to PC an SD card inlet and also one push button on the front. And that clean looking design also resonates in the way this 3D printer is used due to the fact that it's extremely simple to get it up and running slice an object and start printing. Now the majority of the parts of the Neva are actually 3D printed, but by no means do not think that this is not a solid machine. It actually is one of the sturdiest that I have in my shop. The rest of the printer is actually made out of metal for the rods and also injection molded parts for the effector arms. And the reason why those are injection molded is because they they can take much more stress in terms of printing as when this printer prints, it actually does it quite fast. The Neva also has a couple of tricks up its sleeve and one of those is the touch sensitive build plate. The Neva also comes with auto bed leveling calibration and also a run out filament sensor. What it does not have however is a heated build plate because this printer is aimed mostly for fun things and that is for kids and family to enjoy 3D printing. So expect to print pretty much only PLA or PLA type materials with this printer. Now the Neva comes also with its own version of Cura, which is probably one of the most stripped down versions of Cura I've ever seen. And that is why it makes it so user friendly. Once you throw the model into Cura, you have very limited things you can play around with before you start printing. All you can do is either choose from a preset number of PLA filaments already on the list. Alternatively, you can just choose other PLA type and set the temperature. Next up you have the filling density and that is the infill percentage. You can either do it as hollow, you can do as filling with 17% infill or reinforced with 33% infill. Next up is the quality or the layer thickness. You can either do it at fast at 0.2 millimeter layer height, standard at 0.15 or thin at 0.1 millimeter. Now you also have the option to use flexible filaments and what this option does is slow down the printer quite a bit in order for the filament not to jam. Next up is the printing supports. You can either use no supports at all, supports that only touch the build surface or come up from the build surface, or you can choose all sides. You also have the option to improve the adhesion surface. And what that does is simply print a brim around the model. Now, the printer also has a color change feature. And while you can do that on the fly, you can also set a predetermined layer height where you want the color to change. All you do is click on color change, you choose the layer height in which you want to change the color and you simply click on the plus sign over there and it adds a color change on that layer height. And then you can move forward, do another one and another one and as many as you please. Once that's done, that's it. You let the model render and you simply click prepare to print and it saves the uh, file on the SD card. Now it's very important to note that the Neva only reads one type of file name for G code and that is Dagoma 0.g. So if you do expect to create your own profile for this printer in Simplify 3D or in another version of Cura, you can only save the file name in Dagoma 0.g or else it will not read it. What that means also is that you can only save one file at a time on the SD card. You can then have to take it out, change the file and put it back in. Now starting a print is 
actually incredibly easy with this printer. All you do is insert the filament all the way into the hot end, insert the SD card, and then you simply press the button that's at the front of the printer. The effector arm will then come down and will start touching several points on the build plate to perform the uh, auto bed level calibration. What this results in is you always end up with the perfect first layer. You don't have to worry about the Z offset. And that is why you always have to keep the nozzle clean before every print starts. Once the bed leveling is done, the printer will pause at the front of the printer. It will heat the nozzle, purge a little bit just before it starts printing and then commences the print. While it's printing, if you want to pause and change the filament, it's very, very easy. All you have to do is just once again, press the front button, the nozzle will lift up and it will stop there and start blinking. This is where the fun part starts. All you have to do is double tap on the build plate, which I have fondly called the tap tap function. And it's very important that when you do this function, you smile. Once you double tap on the build plate, the filament is instantly retracted all the way out. Once that's done, all you do is simply insert the filament all the way into the hot end. Make sure that the nozzle is clean. Once that's done, you simply press the button again and it continues printing. The run out filament sensor works very similarly to the pause function. Once the filament runs out and the switch detects it, the printer will pause and it will lift the nozzle up and it will start blinking to let you know that the filament has run out. Once again, all you do is double tap on the bill plate. It will uh, bring out all the filament that was left in the PTFE tube for you to replace it. During the live stream, I printed this Benchy right here. And the reason why it has so many different colors is because I was testing out the tap tap function during the live stream, which I absolutely enjoyed. It's one of the nicest features of this printer. This I think it's extremely innovative that you can just use the build plate as a feature rather than just for printing stuff on it. The layer transitions are very clean. Obviously, you just have to make sure that the nozzle is clean before it starts printing. I had a bit of an issue on this print on the chimney of the Benchy. It's nothing too serious, but as a test print without me having to do any form of calibration whatsoever, whether it's in Cora or on the printer itself, I think that's an absolutely gorgeous result. Now I have also taken this printer with me to a fair in Malta to showcase 3D printing, where I've printed by 20 or 25 different Star Wars characters. It was constantly printing all day, so it performed beautifully. However, I needed to print a few things here so I can show you the guys uh, the capabilities of this printer. First up, I printed this Adelinda Dragon right here in Rigid Ink um, PLA, and this was printed at 100 microns. While the print was not outstanding, it seems to have issues with overhangs the layers actually go down very nicely and very evenly. So as a print, it didn't turn out half bad. I was relatively happy with this, but I needed to investigate the overhangs a bit more. Next up, I threw in some matte forward matte black uh, PLA and printed this faceless model right here. And this is actually a very good model to print on a 3D printer because it tests quite a few things, especially with retractions, steep angles, and also fine detail. Now, once again, printed at 100 microns, I could see that it suffers quite a bit with overhangs. Any part of the model that is at a relatively, not necessarily too steep of an angle, but relatively steep, it starts suffering quite a bit. However, once again, where there is no overhangs, the print is almost flawless. The layers go down very nicely on top of each other and you can actually see no Z banding whatsoever, which is awesome. Next up, I threw in some Polyalchemy Elixir and I uh, printed this tower right here, once again at 100 microns. And I have to say that the Polyalchemy Elixir really works well with the, with the Neva. While I usually tend to have to dial in a printer to print with the Elixir, the Neva actually does it beautifully. The layers simply blend in together really nicely, making the layers less visible than most printers do. Once again, printed at 100 microns, I could see these overhangs happening. So I wanted to see, okay, let me try printing something at 200 microns because the Benchy fared much better when it came to overhangs. So I downloaded this castle model right here from my manufacturer. I reduced it in size in order for it to fit in the Neva and I sliced it in 200 micron layer heights. And once again, Polyalchemy Elixir, 
it printed beautifully. I was extremely, extremely impressed with the result. It wasn't perfect, but man, it looks gorgeous. The color pops out really nicely. The detail is all there, especially in the columns. And then I noticed once again, that the overhangs performed really well with 200 microns. So it kind of dawned on me that I should stop printing at 100 microns for the time being. Now, seeing as I had the Polyalchemy Nightshade in the Neva, I wanted to print something fun. And recently a friend of mine, Ben from Hawk 3D Proto in the UK, posted a photo of this awesome Dino character from Flintstones. And this is the guy right here. This was completely printed in Polyalchemy Elixir. There is about six different shades of Polyalchemy Elixir. It was designed by a guy named Steve Salomon, who basically dissects models. So you can print them without any support and then simply attach them together with some glue. And I think it looks absolutely stunning. The results were amazing and I am extremely happy because this is now my favorite print so far. Seeing as I was printing too much with Elixir, I decided to switch it up and try some cheaper type PLA like the uh, Extrude.Limited PLA, which I think I got for like six to seven bucks. It was on sale. And I printed this other model for from Fantasy Graph. Once again, it performed beautifully at 200 microns. It did suffer a bit in extreme overhang angles. However, the layers once again went down really nicely, so I was not disappointed at all. Finally, I decided to print this pen holder right here, also from Fantasy Graph. However, something occurred during this print and I threw in the print and I left the house for a couple of hours. And when I came back, the printer had stopped almost halfway through the print and it was blinking. And that usually tells you that the filament run out, has run out. So I checked and I still had lots of filament left and I moved the filament out completely. I reinserted it and I continued the print and it continued perfectly fine. Later on, I realized that the filament sensor sometimes plays around a bit and it might not detect the filament that's already going through. But thankfully with the resume function, you can always wiggle it around a bit and continue printing. And this was the result. This was printed in filamentive RPLA red and it came out absolutely awesome. Once again, the overhangs, bit of an issue, and I will get to that in a bit. So what do I like about this printer? I love how easy this printer is to use. For someone who's starting out, for a family to join in, my daughter absolutely loves the tap tap function on this printer. I simply slice models for her, throw them in, and she does the rest. And I think as a plug and play 3D printer, this is probably one of the few printers on the market that actually lives up to the name of plug and play. I also like that it's very, very solid. And I said I took it to a fair, carrying it around in the car, it was no issue at all. And it never needs calibration. With the auto bed leveling function, it works beautifully. You're always left with the perfect first layer. So someone who's starting out doesn't have to worry about that. Now, there are a few things on this printer which I truly, truly believe that Dagoma need to work on. First off is the filament sensor. It, the fact that it sometimes it's a hit or miss, it makes me think that it's not exactly the right type of sensor to have. And looking through the hole where the filament goes through, I sometimes see the switch pop out and sometimes not, which means that sometimes it's getting stuck. And that is the issue with the sensor. Next up is the part cooling fan. Now, the Neva does not have a dedicated power cooling fan. What it does have is a hot end enclosure, which recycles the, um, the air from the fan that cools down the hot end and redirects it towards the nozzle. Now, while this is fine and it works to a certain extent, I still think it some more work needs to be done in order for this to be extremely effective, especially if you have a printer that's only printing in PLA. What also does tend to happen sometimes is that the extruder starts clicking and it happened to me during the live stream. Now, while I couldn't figure out what exactly was happening, I did manage to reduce it quite a bit by increasing the temperature that I print with. Um, now, I usually tend to print PLA with 200 degrees. However, 
Knowing that this printer goes at around 80 millimeters a second at any one point in time, I do tend to increase it to about 205 or 210 degrees and that reduces it quite a lot. So it's something to keep in mind. Finally, another thing that I need to point out and this was brought up during the live stream. Now this printer uses an original E3B V6 hot end. Now while it does come with a standard 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle, and you are printing with PLA, so it, it will last you for quite some time. There is a disclaimer, and that is that if you tinker with it, if you change the nozzle, if you modify it in any way, your warranty is voided. And it's very unfortunate because it's something relatively simple to do. I can understand the Goma's point of view on this, but I can also understand the consumer's point of view on this. It's, it's the DIY world of 3D printing, so changing a nozzle should not void your warranty. However, if you do need to change it, you will need to get in touch with Dagoma. Finally, the last thing I would like to see is possibly an advanced user tab on the Cura profile. Now, while it's great for someone who's starting out, eventually that person will advance. So. I can see that person being limited with the limited functionality in Cura. Like for example, I could not print in vase mode because that feature does not exist. While you can print something without infill and just use a shell, if you print a vase, you're still left with the top and the bottom. So it wouldn't be a vase because it would be closed. You can't even adjust retraction settings or the speed the printer prints with or anything in particular. So I think an advanced tab rather than someone having to create a profile from scratch is definitely needed. So at $499, it might not be for everyone. You might feel that it's a bit steep on the price. However, keep in mind that there's a lot that goes behind this. The ease of use, the plug and play-ness of the printer. And it does that beautifully. It's one of the very few printers I've ever gotten my hands on where it's so easy to set up and start printing. And I can see this being a family kind of activity where you sit down around the table, you print things, you have fun, you venture more into 3D printing world. And this would be a great starting point for that type of demographic. And that is it for me guys. So as usual, disclaimer, everything I said in this video, all my thoughts are my own. No one paid me to say them. And they're based on the experience I've had with this 3D printer right here. The Neva was sent to me by Dagoma for review. I was supposed to send it back to them after a couple of months of testing it out and putting out this review. However, Dagoma reached out to me recently to tell me that they would like to give this printer to my daughter for her to play with. And she is absolutely over the moon and now won't leave me alone until I finish this review so it can go into her bedroom. So thank you very much Dagoma for the absolutely awesome gift and keeping my daughter busy. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you want more information on the Neva, you'll find links in the video description below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell if you want notifications where um, I'll be online and if I have live streams and so on and so forth. I wanna thank you guys for watching. I wanna thank my awesome patrons for their absolutely amazing support. And as always, happy making guys.